African drums are talking. Through day and through night, the booming of the drums continues. They bring you a story of a primitive land, of life and death in strange and varying forms. Dark bodies slinking through trees, feline forms creeping through underbrush. This is nature's hunting ground, where murder is rampant and the law of the jungle prevails. Professor Anton Edwards, a man of huge proportions, heading a scientific expedition into Africa on the trail of what, to him, is a tribe of people related to the lost Atlanteans, is seeking a small carved native snuff box. Carvings on this box will open the way for his party through some bad country. But while the professor, his daughter Lorna, and his assistant Jack Martin approach their goal, they are suddenly set upon and, hands bound behind their backs, forced to walk ahead of their captors. You all right, Jack? Yes, I'm all right. What do you make of it, sir? I've been afraid to speak in case they'd separate us. Can't make head or tail of it, my boy. These natives hadn't let a peep out of them since grabbing us. They usually go about after a capture with yells and screeches. The whole thing was over so quickly, it seemed like black magic. I wonder how Lorna's taking it. I don't know if you've noticed it, Jack, but they haven't laid a hand on her. At least not since I got over that whack on the head. What happened while I was laid out there? Well, you weren't out very long, sir. Only about half a minute. They probably figured it was the only way to deal with you. They threw me on my face and tied my hands. When I was hauled up again, Lorna was ringed with spears. I don't think they touched her with their hands. I wish this black behind me would keep his spear out of my back. If it wasn't for Lorna, I'd snap these thongs and brain the idiot. I wouldn't do that, sir. They'd just tie you up more effectively the next time. They don't know your strength. It might be a good idea to let them think you're helpless. Yes, I suppose so. But I'd brain a few before they got me down again. I wish I knew what their game was. What tribe are they? They're rather large for natives of these parts. I don't know. I can't get the beggars to talk. They just grunt and point the way. Well, we've been walking for half an hour. We ought to be getting near somewhere. Oh, yes, look. There's a group of huts. Yeah. Yeah, that big hut over there must belong to the chief. See that one next to it with all the paraphernalia? Yes. That belongs to a witch doctor. They're taking Lorna over to the chief's hut. Can't we do something, sir? There's nothing to be done. She hasn't been harmed yet, which is a good sign. But if I hear the slightest cry out of her, somebody's going to pay for it. Hmm? Uh, they evidently mean us to park in that hut straight ahead. Come on. That hut doesn't look exactly healthy, does it? You'll have to bend and go in sideways. You'll take part of the doorway with you, sir. Uh, you go in first, Jack. I want to try something. All right, sir. Here goes. <laughs> well, that's that. I thought it would loosen their tongue. Well, what did you do to start all that babbling? Simply turned around three times before entering the hut. Does that mean anything? Nothing as far as I know. If my hands had been free, I'd have played eeny, meeny, miny, mo on my fingers. <laughs> These blacks are so full of superstition, anything like that appears to be bad medicine to them. What? Well, why did you do it, sir? Well, I couldn't bear the thought of being taken without giving them something to worry about. Besides, I wanted to hear them talk. Lord, but it's dark in here. Yeah. It'll be dark outside in a few minutes. Are you sure they don't mean any harm to Lorna? Well, the signs are fairly good up to now. I hope Lorna keeps her head, though. You know, the thing that stands out in my mind is that these blacks haven't laid a hand on her. That's it. They, they've either been given orders not to touch her or they think she's sacred. If it's the former, I don't like the look of it. That means we've been watched and they knew Lorna was one of our party. Well, let's hope they think she's a goddess or something. And we'll have time to work before they begin any ritual stuff. Look, they've placed a guard at the door. Mm -hmm. I can see to the crack in the wall. Uh, these walls are nothing but interwoven grass, Jack. Be an easy thing to break them down. We'll probably get a spear in the back of the neck as soon as we put our heads outside. Mm -hmm. Look at that. 
There's someone talking to the guard. Hmm. It's a woman. She's coming in. Look at her lips. Like great saucers. Uh. That's food she's placing on the ground. Turn around, Jack. You must untie your hands. Yes, that's right. Good heavens, sir. This is unbelievable. I've heard of these great-lipped women, but I've never seen one before. Well, I'm glad I'm going to have my hands free to eat, anyhow. <laughs> oh, boy, that feels good. Bongo, no. Bongo, no. Uh, <clears throat> that means it's your job to take these thongs off my wrists. Come look sharp, Jack. I'm hungry. Jack, that's a woman from the Ubangi's race. Hold still, sir. So confoundedly black in here, I've got to feel for the knot. Oh, don't worry. I'll snap it. <clears throat> That's better. And where's the grub? You know, it'll be the first time I've tasted native food in years. Did those thongs cut your wrists, sir? Not enough to worry about. Well, I have some iodine capsules in my pocket. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Let's go native for a while and forget civilization. When I do that, it always helps me to outthink these savages. I've been in worse fixes than this. But then, I didn't have Lorna with me. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that tastes good. Say, how do you eat this stuff, sir? With your fingers? Well, of course. Back to nature, my boy. Does you good once in a while. You don't seem to be worried at all since you recognized that woman with the great lip extension. Recognized her tribe, I mean. Well, I'm not, Jack. But wait a minute. Maybe I'm wrong. I've just thought of something. Is it anything helpful, sir? No, I'm afraid not. Possibly I was holding on to a forlorn hope. You see, the Ubangis are a peaceable people and full of curiosity. I thought maybe we were victims of that. And on the other hand? Well, those people have been habitual slaves for many years. It's just possible that this woman is just that, a slave. Well, are there any known tribes of Ubangis in these parts? No. No, the furthest north I found them is the village of Kayabi, bordering on the Cameroons. Mm. Come on, come on, eat something, Jack. We'll need all the strength we can get. Well, I... I really don't feel like eating, sir. <laughs> no stomach for native food. Eh? <laughs> then if you were cooped up in a place like this for weeks, you'd soon get to like it. Well, I guess I'm just a little... <gasps> You hear that? What's that? That dog barking. Quiet. I want to listen to it. I knew it, Jack. I knew it the moment I heard it. Thank goodness I haven't lost those senses. What is it, sir? All I heard was the yap of a native dog. That native dog you heard was Unguru. He knows where we are, evidently followed us and saw what happened. But what can he do? The native porters can't help him. We don't want the porters. I'd rather have him guru with me than any ten men you'd like to name, Jack. I haven't told you his history, have I? No, the first time I saw him was when I joined you. Yeah, well, he's a Maasai. Chief's son. Keep quiet. There he is now. The far end of the hut. I'm going over. That you, Nguru? Ah, Buona. Fear nothing. Missy, safe in the hut. How did you get up here? These men, fool, hear nothing, see nothing. You know where my daughter is? I, Buana. Missy in hut, one, two, three. Guru, go kill him, God. Huh? No, not yet. Wait. What did you bring, you old shadow? Guru, bring Buana's ronga. Good, my war club. Shotgun, little warrior. Dick Buana, Dick. Yeah. Jack, help me dig under the hut quick. He's brought a revolver for you and my war club. Guru, if there's any danger, leave the things there and move back until I give the signal. Danger, finish, Buana. Guru, kill him one guard by gate. One man, big eye, try stop him, Guru. Catch him neck, so so. Mm. What did he say he did? He broke the neck of the guard at the gate and also another man who saw too much. It's an old trick when Guru and I used during the war. But they'll find the dead guard and start a search, won't they? No. 
No, they'll think it's the juju I worked as I entered the hut. There'll be no mark on them. Here's the gun, sir. And here's the club. Yeah, there's a knife, too. Guru. Asante Sala. That goes for me as well, old fellow. Thanks very much. Why not? They find dead man. Lie still, old watchdog. Lie still. Is it the guard? I was a man lying bush, no see. Good work, Guru. When safe, return to Missy. Say we come tonight. I, Buana, I go. How in the world did he manage it, sir? I mean, coming through the village like that. Jack, that black sinner could go through Hades without even Satan knowing of it. You know, sometimes I wonder if he isn't Satan himself. <laughs> he holds all these tribespeople in absolute contempt. Well, if he can do a thing like that, I don't wonder at it. By the way, sir, what war was it that you spoke of just now? Surely you didn't have Nguru in France with you. No, no, I was in East Africa in 1914. Nguru was my guide and gun bearer. We attached ourselves to a British force that was moving into some country I wanted to go over. And <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Listen. The drums have started, sir. I think it's a message. Yes, listen. Come. Come. Meet. White. Full moon. Tomorrow. Good heavens, Jack. What is it, sir? These people are cannibals. They're setting a feast for the full moon and calling the tribe home, saying the meat has been found. Good Lord. I didn't think it was as serious as that. We haven't heard a sound from Lorna. Do you think anything could have happened? No, Jack. These people only become cannibals at the full moon. I know what they are now. They never kill until the full moon appears. It's a sort of ritual with them. But that's tomorrow. Yes, we've got to get out of here tonight or we'll never get out. That's Lorna. Good Lord, sir, we can't sit here and do nothing. <laughs> 